Now, you have the most amazing bone structure already. I'm going to put a bit of blush on you and see if we need to contour at all, because um, contour is a very different thing, but I might contour for the camera, even though you don't need it, okay? Right, now I have this brush. This is a Shurimura brush, it's 20 years old and it's dying. But so many brushes, good or bad, they lose hairs, and their little hairs you find, especially with blush, <laughs> you'll find a little hair here, a little hair here, and then you start picking them off and it's so annoying. So the quality brushes are really important for things like blush brushes, okay? The older you get, I think, the more you keep away from you want dirty rose colours. You want the colours that reflect most in one skin, a sort of lovely dirty rose, sort of, um, th th those lovely. You don't really want apricots and you don't want pinks. So you want quite muted colours mm, like this. Okay? You have to find the right place. A lot of people say smile. Smile, <laughs> smile, smile. And that's where you put yeah. it, you put it there. I don't agree with that. Because what I want to do is I don't want to put it exactly where the apple of the cheek is, because that's very childlike. Mm and often the wrong place. Especially nowadays where people have had so much surgery, because where the apple of the cheek is not really natural anymore anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm absolutely on telling the truth. So you have to work out where, I want to work out artistically where the best place for the blush is. I think I hopefully get it right most of the time. For me, in your case, just don't smile at all. It's going to be just here. And taking, I'm going to take a little bit into, into your temple here, okay? And then just around here. And I'm not going to take it too low. And that might be it. So a little bit of a crescent thing going on, lifting again up to the temples. Exactly. So if you look into the mirror now, you can see there's one side down and one side mm. not. So here's where it is. Yes? Mm. Here. It's really light. I wonder if someone's got chubbier cheeks. She's got fantastic cheekbones, but for someone who's got fatter cheeks, how do you find that magic place? Um, well, again, I think it's very much to do with looking in the mirror and being honest and seeing where you think it looks best. But I tell you what, if you don't want to sit all day with a um, makeup artist doing your face in, 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 in a department store, at least let them put blush on you. Because you will see immediately if they put it on correctly mm. or incorrectly. Yeah. You will know immediately, no, that's not where I want it, but never mind, thank you very much, goodbye. Mm. Or you'll say, wow, that's just where I wanted it, perfect. It's a very easy lesson to learn, very easy. The best brushes for um, contour and for blush are completely round ones, okay? Because it will always splay properly. Mm. You see? Yes. Which is a really good tip. So you, this kind of brush is perfect for contour and for blush. Is it better to have a small one? Yeah. I like working with small blushes because brushes, cause then I have more control over them. That's the only reason mm. why. Mm. Okay, contour colour. I'm using as a contour colour a really, really, really dull, dull, nothing beige. It has no it has no red in it. It has no green in it. It has no colour in it at all. It's like the most nothing colour in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. This is called Nude mm -hmm. by um, Bobby Brown. And this is the most perfect contour colour, okay? Because it will not look like anything that is not natural to your skin tone. Yeah. It has enough grey in it to look like a shading colour. Yeah. And you can, the camera can actually see that I'm creating a line down the face. This is, this all started, this all started a long time ago in the, of course, when makeup first came into existence during film makeup, mm. you know, in the, in the mm -hmm. 30s, 20s and 30s. But when it became, contour became really big for all of us to remember what contour was like was in the, in the 70s with David Bowie and all of that oh. lot, when sort of the 70s really oh, contour yeah, took really off yeah. for the average person, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and there were stripes down the side of the face. Gone are those days. And the nose. Gone are those days. It was like, you know, five colors, you know, you had the, a dark stripe, a bronze stripe, and then a pink stripe, right? <laughs> now, what you're trying to do is just create shadow. Mm -hmm. So imagine you have this incredible jawline. So you have, which so many women do. I mean, they can still have great cheekbones but actually lost mm -hmm. their jawline. Mm -hmm. Um, you take it from the back of the ear here, all the way down, on, now funny enough, not underneath, mm -hmm. but actually on the jawline. Okay, we've done the bronzer, we've done the blush, and we've done the contour. I want, I want to add bronzer, which is another third tool. 
in structuring the face. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do not, n under no circumstances, want to make you look brown. Yeah. Okay, I just want to add more structure into your face and give you more, if you like, more energy to your face and a more sort of healthy glow. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking a classical bronzer and I'm just going to take this way back, mm -hmm. uh, just above the contour and down onto the cheek, slightly over the blush, mixing the two together, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm now combining the bronzer and the contour. I'm also going to take a little bit into your hairline where we always said where the sun would hit you if you'd been on the beach. Mm. This is where the sun would hit you. It'll give you a really healthy glow. Okay, and that's it. 